In 2003, the longest prison sentence in US history at the time was given to a hacker named Brian Saucedo. Saucedo and two accomplices hacked into Lowe's internal network attempting to steal credit card information and sell it to a guy known as the Soup Nazi. All with the assistance of a Pringles can. Now, before we go into any more detail, let me introduce you to Adam Botbill. He was known as the shy giant of a man who stood at 6 feet 5 inches tall, who would describe himself as a geek with a bad childhood. Saucedo apparently met Adam through local computer circles and the two became friends. Now we have that background information, our story begins in spring of 2003. Adam and his roommate Paul Timmons were wall driving around Southfield, Michigan. While wall driving, they managed to stumble across an unsecure network at Lowe's. Wall driving is the act of looking for a publicly accessible Wi-Fi network from a moving vehicle, using a laptop or a smartphone. Six months after finding the unsecure network, Adam came back to the same location with Saucedo. Together they discovered a weakness in the system and found out that they could jump directly from the Southfield Lowe's to the company's central database in North Carolina, and further to the local networks of the stores around the entire country. This is exactly what they did over the following few weeks. While doing this, they were planting a software inside the server. More on that later. Lowe's network engineers were able to detect the break-ins and piece together timings of when the break-ins would occur. On November 6, 2003, Lowe's officials called the Charlotte office of the FBI as there was a break-in happening at that very second. Using system monitoring tools, the Lowe's team determined a security breach was happening that very moment in Southfield. The FBI immediately went to stake out the Southfield store's parking lot. While in the car park, they spotted a very suspicious car, a Pontiac Grand Prius. Now normally, this car isn't very suspicious, but what makes it so suspicious was one or two reasons. The first reason was the two men sitting inside the car typing away on their laptops. But the dead giveaway was that the car was bristled with antennas. One of the antennas being a Pringles can that was wrapped in foil. So picture this right, you're an FBI agent staking out a parking lot trying to find something suspicious. You see a Grand Prix which has two guys typing away on their laptops, antennas poking out, and one of them's a Pringles can. Anyway, the FBI ran the license plate of the car and it came back with Adam's name. The agents watched them work for about 20 minutes. After that, they tailed them to a local Caesars Pizza restaurant, while low security team worked to figure out what the hackers had done. The security team had discovered that the pair had modified a created piece of software called TCP Credit. Lowe's used TCP Credit to handle credit card transactions. The two changed this program so it would stash customers' credit card numbers where the hackers could come back later and retrieve them. The program had collected only six credit card numbers when it was discovered. Shortly after this, the FBI had arrested Salcedo and Adam. Salcedo and Adam pleaded guilty to conspiracy and computer fraud. The sentence they received was largely based on the amount of harm that would have occurred if the plan succeeded. On appeal, Salcedo's lawyers argued that the hacker's sentence should have been proportionate with the actual damage that was caused, but the appeal was denied. Adam got a total of 26 months in federal prison and the 21 year old Brian Salcedo got a whopping 9 years. Now this is where the story gets interesting. Four years after pleading guilty, hacker Brian Salcedo learned from prison that a co-conspirator who pressured him to go through with the hack was possibly working for the feds at the time. Salcedo started replaying in his head a crucial moment right before the crime. A week before he had planted the credit card sniffing code, he nearly backed out of the entire scheme. Salcedo says he started getting cold feet when he realised that Lowe's network administrators had detected his presence on the network. He wanted to bail, but he had already lined up a buyer for the credit cards. A mysterious figure in the computer underground known as the Soup Nazi, who wouldn't take no for an answer. The Soup Nazi told Salcedo and his partner that it was too late to turn back. He insinuated threats against us and said we had to continue doing what we were doing, said Salcedo in a phone interview from prison. Federal indictments unmasked the soup Nazi as a 27-year-old Albert Gonzalez. Gonzalez is the alleged mastermind 
of a series of Wi-Fi based intrusions into US retailers including TJ Maxx, Office Max and DSW. Perfecting the attack pioneered by Salcedo, Gonzalez allegedly stole at least 40 million credit card and debit card numbers worth millions of dollars on the black market. Court records revealed that Gonzalez had been busted in July 2003, three months before Salcedo's Lowe's hack began. At his arrest, the government admits Gonzalez became a key informant for the US Secret Service, eventually aiding in the 2004 arrest of 28 fraudsters linked to the credit card fraud super site known as shadowcrew.com. Now, I know for a fact that he was an informant during the time that he was dealing with us, says Salcedo. Another source involved in the lowest hack confirmed Salcedo's account and said that the soup Nazi made the impression that he was connected to organized crime and demanded that Salcedo go through with the attack. Although it's unlikely that the Secret Service instructed Gonzalez to threaten Salcedo, and the agency may not have even been aware that its informant was dealing with the Lowe's hacker. These revelations raise enough questions of potential trap for Salcedo to attempt a court challenge to his nine-year prison sentence. As stated before, it was the longest sentence in US history at the time. This was supposed to be upheld by federal appeal in court. Salcedo's argument would basically be that Gonzalez threatened him as a government agent in order to induce him to plant the sniffer. He would not have planted the sniffer, but of the threat, and his sentence was based on that. Sasado desperately tries to get in contact with his prosecutor to attempt to challenge the decision in court, although Sasado's prosecutor did not return a phone call Tuesday. All this information about Albert Gonzalez came out because he was arrested in possession of more than $20,000 in cash and a Glock 27 firearm. All this occurred in August of 2008. Now, Sosato had served his time at the federal prison camp in McKinney, Pennsylvania, where he had a job at the welding shop. After serving his time, I think it's safe to say he won't be maliciously hacking anymore. Thank you for watching.